Former Nagaland Chief Minister S.C. Jameer has made sharp, some sharp statements on the Naga political issue. And talking exclusively to our Kohima correspondent Sarah Konyak, the veteran leader questioned the lingering row over the issue of separate flag and constitution besides accusing the Naga leaders of holding on to the past and overstressing on the so-called unique Naga history. A candid SC Jameer minced no words in stating that separate flag and constitution are attributes of a sovereign nation and find no mention in the framework agreement or the preamble. Well, uh, Jameer felt uh, there was no real logic in raising the issues time and again. He added that there is no room for extra sovereignty in the constitution of India and that both the framework agreement and the preamble or the agreed position was signed under the umbrella of Indian sovereignty. Listen in. Now, after completing all these uh, steps, again, some of the leaders of the underground they are raising the issue of flags and constitution. So some of us ask me my view. So I see my personal view is like this. Several constitution and several flag. This, these are attributes of a sovereign nation. That is the reason why Fizu, who was leading the movement for sovereignty, he was only targeting this sovereignty because once you get sovereignty, automatically constitution and flag becomes part of that. In other words, these are the attributes of sovereign nation. Whereas in the official document signed by both the groups, neither sovereignty nor integration appear. That means, very wisely, through their political wisdom, they also have recognized, they call it contemporary political realities. And then whatever they have done is the correct step for an honorable political settlement. But after this second, they are time and again uh, they are raising this issue, which I don't understand. And in uh, Constitution of India, and I don't think in 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 any other constitution of the country, sharing of sovereignty can appear. But people are sovereign. Yes, they also say yes. That's correct. But there's only one sovereignty. In the country, that's why they have not included any other extra sovereignty in the framework agreement, nor in the preamble agreement. And they have wisely done it. In other words, all these agreements were made under the umbrella of Indian sovereignty, according to my views. I don't know what it will come, but the text of the competencies which I have gone through and the framework agreement which they have uh, displayed, I can conclude that all these agreements were made under the Constitution of India, or I can say, within the sovereign power of the country. That's what. Well, uh, Jameer also accused the Naga leaders, both on the ground and the political class, of allegedly giving undue stress on the so-called uniqueness of Naga history, thereby holding on to past events. Jameer accused the leaders of living in the past even at the cost of the present of the younger generations. The question is, after signing all this, Almost at all occasions, people are talking about the past. They talk about the uniqueness of Naga history. I don't know what kind of uniqueness they are talking about. 
but may I enlighten you. It is only when Bajpai, as Prime Minister, visited Kohima in a press conference, he said, we also recognize the uniqueness of Naga history. Now, obviously, the Prime Minister of a country will never speak about something which is outside the Constitution nor India's sovereignty. So it was, in other words, a diplomatic language to assuage the feelings of the Naga people. <laughs> but today, whether it is by underground leadership, some of them, or even overground leadership, they took it as a political balance. And today is commonly used. Every speech, every statement they talk about uniqueness of Naga history. May I tell you that every community, every tribe has got its own uniqueness. What do you mean by uniqueness? It is uncommon, singular. Huh? So there's every time there's a peculiarity of any tribe, any people, any community, yet they are unique in that way. But the English phrase uniqueness, it is not a preserve of the Naga people alone. I think we should also not be so, uh, I think, uh, excited on this, uh, this uh, English phrase. It is not our own uh, the preserve. So the, I think as an elderly person, I would like to caution the young people not to be enamored uh, or flattened by this English phrase that we are peculiar or we are quite different people. We are, that, that's one. And therefore, I think the conundrum of the present Nagapolity is that we are living in the past. If you read the statement of the people, of the leaders, of the organization, they are talking only about Naga Club, Samuel Commission, Pilvisai, and so on and so forth. But these are past events. And any group or any community that live on the past will find it difficult to look forward. And we are placed in the same position today in Nagaland that most of the leaders they are so obsessed only with the past but none is coming out. What kind of uh, prison the younger generation sh should inherit from us? Jam well, uh, Jamir also caused doubts about the ability of the newly formed core committee on Naga political issue to push things forward. Well, the former chief minister added that he was uh, disillusioned by uh, the various uh, groups repeating the same things again. All men, I think uh, I feel sometimes uh, disillusioned when various uh, groups, whether it is political groups or civil groups, I think they are chanting the same team. As for example, you are talking about core committee. Yes, it's good that uh, one should have concern about the prevailing situation in the state. But core committee, now, now let us see. The problem is between government of India and underground leaders. And they have been talking for the last more than 20 years. All the past histories have been discussed, deliberated, digested, and after having done that one, they have put into concrete uh, this um, thing that is framework and preamble agreement. So why should you go on repeating whatever has been already discussed, deliberated in detail? Now they have presented the concrete competencies for uh, implementation. And it is only government of India and uh, Nagarjuna. 
I don't think uh, Nagaland state government have any quarrel with the government of India because they have taken all the religions to the constitution of India to maintain unity and integrity of the country. And their duty is to create a peaceful environment, peaceful condition, so that people can talk, meet without any uh, this, uh, hindrance. Law and order should be maintained. Mm. And therefore, yes, at the fact end of this. Uh... And on the issue of the appeal for reconciliation and unity between the NSC and IM and NNPGs, uh, Jameer felt if both groups sign the same agreement, there will be no room for further quarrel. In that uh, this uh, core committee resolution, you are talking about reconciliation. I think uh, when they have agreed to resolve their problem with the government of India, even without asking reconciliation or unity, once they agree to the same principle, uh, without any pain, they will be part of the same. So this is a very painless uh, operation huh? because signing in the same document and they said uh, one solution, yes, it will be only one solution huh? because whatever agreed upon with uh, NSNI and NNFG, it will be one because whatever is, will be included, incorporated in the constitutional media, it will be the same. So automatically, we shall be reconciled to the political realities and we should be reconciled among ourselves because there will be no room for quarreling also. Huh? And we shall be, we become united because uh, there will be only one issue, that is an other issue only at that time. So I think uh, there is no uh, uh, point in beating up the bush now. Significantly, Jameer also said that while the youth of Nagaland wanted to be a citizen of the world, the leaders were pulling them back to the past.